choir. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning service. I think it's a great great way to begin any service. Higher ground. That yeah. should be our hope this morning. Lord, do something in my life to take me forward and make forward progress in my life. I trust that's every one of us. Let's ask the Lord to bless our service today. Father, thank you for the privilege that is ours to be here this morning, the opportunity to spend some time singing. Lord, you are worthy of our praise, and you have done so much in our lives for which we ought to be thankful and joyful. And so, Lord, as we sing, trusting this morning that we would sing from the heart, and Lord, that uh, our focus, our attention would be on you. And then, Lord, as we have some time in your word, we pray that as your word is preached, you would challenge us, Lord. We want you to not just inform us, but change us today. Father, uh, encourage us through your word. Father, help each one of us to be responsive to it as you bring things to our attention, as you show us where we have strayed, where we have erred, that we would be ready to receive that correction and respond accordingly. Thank you for, again, just the opportunity we have today. Please bless every part of the service, and we'll ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Grab your hymnals this morning, please. Stand with me if you're able. Turn to hymn number five, O Worship the King. Again, that's hymn number five, O Worship the King. Let's really sing it out and lift it up to our Savior on that first stanza. O Worship the King, all glorious above, and gratefully sing His power and His love, our shield and start to the song service this morning. Turn please to hymn number 530. Again, that's hymn number 530, Joy Unspeakable. Again, hymn number 530, Joy Unspeakable. I have found his grace is all complete. Let's sing it out on that first stanza. I have found his grace is all complete. Yeah. 
said amen you may be seated this time we'll have our ushers come as we prepare to receive our uh, sunday morning offering just a reminder if you're a first-time guest and you filled out that guest card you're welcome to drop that in the offering plate as it goes by but let's go ahead and pray ask god's blessing upon our offering here this morning lord uh what a joy and a blessing uh, that we have to be able to gather here this morning lord we're thankful uh, for this institution of the church, Lord, and that you have given. And we're thankful, Father, that uh, we can come and gather and get away from the world, Lord, and to hear your word preached and to sing praises unto you. So we just pray your blessing over the service this morning, Father, that to, you'd use it in a great way in each of our lives, Lord. Help us uh, to be conformed to the image of your Son, Lord. And then certainly, Father, if there's any here not saved, that you'd work in their heart and bring them to that place, Lord, of salvation here this morning, Lord. Uh, but, Lord, we also are thankful for the opportunity to give, and we just pray, Lord, that you take what's given this morning. Father, we know that little is much when you're in it. Pray that you multiply it in a great way and bless the gift and the giver. And we ask your blessing upon the remainder of the service. In Jesus' name, amen.
Grab your hymnals again this morning, please. Stand with me if you're able. Turn to hymn number 516. Again, that's hymn number 516. Make me a channel of blessing. I trust that's our desire this morning. And hymn number 516. Make me a channel of blessing. Let's sing it out on that first stanza. Is your life a channel of blessing? Is the love of God flowing through you? Are you telling the lost of the Savior? Are you ready his service to do? Make me a channel of blessing today. Make me a channel of blessing, I pray. My life possessing, my service blessing. Make me a channel of blessing today. Let's jump ahead to that third stanza. Is your life a channel of blessing? turn just a few pages forward again hymn number 525 hymn number 525 little as much when god is in it while you're turning there i just want to remind you uh, that during the first verse of this next hymn our children will exit to junior church again that's ages three to eight over in the king's kids room but again hymn number 525 little as much when god is in it so thankful for that so let's sing it out and lift it up on that first stanza in the harvest field now ripen there's a word This morning, you may be seated. At this time, Tabitha Hennings is going to come and bless us with a special. The timeless theme, birth and hell. 
Amen. Well, that ought to be something what we uh, look forward to with excitement. No more night, no more pain, no more crying. Eternal life is going to be great. We were talking about a, a little bit of that in uh, Sunday school this morning. Appreciate that, Miss Tabitha. And then thank you, choir, for the special. That was uh, that song. I'm still amazed. Is one I I I'm thinking back, and I think the choirs probably sung that since the very beginning of our choir, whenever many decades ago that that was. It's a an old song, but it's a good one, and there's a reason it's stuck around as long as it has because it's a good reminder to us that we ought to still be amazed, never get over the fact that we're not under the bondage of sin anymore and never got past that I'm free at last. These are things that ought to be encouraging to us, challenging to us, because there's one thing we should never get past is the fact that I used to be lost, now I'm found. I used to be headed to hell, now I'm on my way to heaven. (laughs) It's stuff that uh, you ought not ever uh, allow to be forgotten. It's a bit of a last-minute uh, schedule change I want to just inform you about for next Sunday morning service. I'm glad to get to tell you uh, Brother Caleb Brees is going to be preaching next week. Um, for those who only uh, are able to come to church on Sunday mornings, you've probably never heard him preach here, and so I'm glad to get to have him preach next Sunday morning. Um, wasn't necessarily the plan we had scheduled, but I was backup plan for Valley Avenue Baptist Church in Falls City. They were to have Brother Sam uh, preach their revival beginning next Sunday uh, through Wednesday. And uh, Miss Sandy, Brother Sam's wife, had uh, surgery, hip surgery, uh, back in March. And uh, she's still not at the point where she can travel. In fact, can't even drive yet. So he just was not able to get away and said he had to stay with her. He's not preaching anything until May, I think. And so um, I'm the backup. (laughs) And so Brother Chad called me yesterday and said, hey, are you able to uh, still come and preach? And I said, well... Uh, sure, yes, I, I am. And so kind of shuffling some things around here. So pray for Valley Avenue. They went from Brother Sam to me. <laughs> pray for them. Uh, that's really disappointing. Um, uh, so pray for them, but pray for Brother Caleb as well next Sunday. I know he's going to be a blessing. I'm still chewing on the meat he gave us from Psalm 142 last time he preached a couple Wednesday nights ago. It was a blessing. I know he'll, it'll be a blessing to you next Sunday morning. And of course, pray for uh, Miss Sandy Davison. Pray for uh, Brother Caleb. Pray for, for Valley Avenue. Again, just want to let you know what was kind of headed uh, that direction for next week. So we're in 1 Corinthians 12 this morning. If you'll go ahead and turn there and don't stand just yet. Uh, Preachers like to flatter themselves by thinking people remember uh, the messages that they preach. Uh, Maybe, uh, you know, sometime later and be able to remember it. Uh, The fact of the matter is we often have a hard time remembering what was preached two weeks ago. (laughs) Uh, Maybe we can remember last week, but two weeks ago might, might be a stretch for some of us. And that's that's, you know, just, I think, kind of the nature of things. you got a lot of preaching that takes place, and to try to keep it all track, keep it track of all of it uh, can be difficult. I hope this passage will stick out to you, and particularly this phrase I'm going to share with you, because it's a phrase I've, I've repeated throughout since we first were here in 1 Corinthians 12. I've tried to repeat this phrase um, quite often. Uh, we were in this passage in 1 Corinthians 12. The very first Wednesday we were back after uh, things had We'd taken a hiatus from having in-person services right at the kind of the beginning of COVID when it first came into uh, the Nebraska area and the governor shut things down and we were limited to 10 people. So we had the 10 people in the service kind of rotated through the church for about two months or so. We were beginning to just watch online. It was kind of new. Everybody was kind of just figuring out how are we going to do this whole COVID thing? What's, what's the best policy and all that? And so it was the first service we had back in person. It was that Wednesday night, and we were in 1 Corinthians 12, and, and the following Sunday night, we, were, we finished up this particular chapter. And I'm, I'm thinking of those days, thankful that that's all behind us, <laughs> praying nothing like that ever happens again, and uh, certainly uh, grateful that that's, that's history. Um, but having said that, that was uh, about three years ago. We were in this passage, and so I'm, I'm not expecting you to remember everything that we covered from that. But I hope you remember this phrase. You need the body, and the body needs you. You need the body, and the body needs you. I'm going to try to make that point this morning. That when we first began our theme for the year, loving God, loving people, this particular passage was one that the Lord, I believe, just kind of laid on my heart, and particularly even this passage, but also the one we're going to, Lord willing, look at tonight in 1 Corinthians 13. Of course, the love chapter. We're going to spend some time in that this evening, hopefully. Uh, so he just kind of, kind of made made that a, 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 a I had kind of in my mind, not sure when we were going to get to it, and just the way the calendar worked out, I said, all right, this is the Sunday for it. 
And so we're back here in 1 Corinthians 12. You need the body, and the body needs you. Let's go ahead and stand, and we're going to read together. Beginning in verse number 12. 1 Corinthians 12, and we're going to read through verse number 27. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? I, I don't know if Paul's intent was to be humorous here. Maybe it was, I don't know, but I, I think he is a little bit here anyway. I think imagine a big eye by itself, you know, just, or ear, he said, where's the hearing? That's interesting pictures being pictured for us. Verse 18, but now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one, mem one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular." Let's pray. Our Father, thank you for this passage of Scripture that uh, we have before us this morning. Uh, Lord, excited to get to look at this idea again. It is so important that we, we understand it, that we apply it. Father, I trust that you'd help me as I preach to clearly communicate what is here, what you've laid on my heart for this morning. I do pray that you'd bless the service tonight as we spend some time in 1 Corinthians 13 and seeing what real love is is and what real love does. Father, I trust that you'd help us with that as well. Father, but as we have this time this morning in chapter 12, please, again, Lord, don't just inform us, Father, but help us to change from what we've, what we've uh, had a, a chance to spend time looking at this morning. I trust that if there's anything that needs to be corrected, needs to be altered in our lives, that you would help us to do that this morning. Again, help me as I preach, Lord, trusting every one of us would be responsive as you lead us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. you. may be seated. How many of you would have this morning got in your vehicle and attempted to drive to church if your brakes were missing from your car? All four of them. Not just worn out and, and old, but gone. No brakes in your vehicle. How many would say, I'm still going to make it to church? I'm all for being in church. But I don't want you to try to come to church without brakes. Wouldn't get very far if in your vehicle the battery was missing. Or if there are gears in the engine. I don't know how an engine works, but there, I know there are gears that work and, and make the thing to function. If, the, if there were gears missing from your engine, would you get it? Would you be able to get to church? Axles not in their place. The wheels are gone on your vehicle. If you remove, remove the fuel injector or the transmission, the, the fact of the matter is you're not getting to church. Probably wouldn't even try. You say, well, those are important parts of the vehicle. What about the, the less important parts? What about the oil drain plug? I wouldn't know what that is except for Google. But if you take the oil drain plug out, all your oil just kind of comes out of your vehicle. Are you going to get to church? Well, you might make it a little ways, but eventually your vehicle is going to break. Your engine's going to stop wor working. Your, your windshield wiper, you say, that's not important until it is, <laughs> until it's raining. The lug nut on your, on your tire. We had 
a couple years ago, a church, uh, we took it to Midas. They rotated the tires, didn't tighten the, the lug nuts all the way on the one wheel. Driving down the, the road, the wheel was doing this. And it could have turned into a big problem had we not noticed it and were able to fix it. It could be tempting to say, well, there are some parts of the vehicle that are extremely important, some things that are not important. Do the very same exercise with our body. What part of your body would you be willing to say, I don't need this? Not many parts of it. Small parts of our body that we say are not important or we can do without. Uh, one preacher shared this quote. He said this. I know you've heard it before. He said, for want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For want of a shoe, the horse was lost. For want of a horse, the rider was lost. For want of a rider, the battle was lost. For want of a battle, the kingdom was lost. And all for the want of a horseshoe nail. A tiny little nail. The chain effects that it can have. And the point I'm trying to make this one is this. Tiny things, they matter. Little things matter. When they're part of a larger body. They're part of a larger body. Every part has an important place. Every part's essential to the workings of the whole thing. If you're not getting the point already, I'm going to lay it out for you here. Every part of a church body is important. Every member is vital. Every member. Again, thinking about our body. What part of our body are we willing to part with? That's not important. Well, same thing's true in Christ's body. Every member important. I believe that's part of what Paul's trying to get across here. Every member is important. He's trying to get them to understand that every member has a place. Every member has a part to play in the overall health of the body. For those who may not be familiar with the book of 1 Corinthians, we're not going to spend long here because it is a pretty well-known book. It's written to a church that wasn't functioning like it should have been, a church that was really in disarray. And Paul is using the entire letter to try to correct things over and again, over and again. He's dealing with issues that they had. And one of the issues was this priority that they had for spiritual gifts, this, this idea that speaking in tongues and prophesying and all these other very visible, outward displayed spiritual gifts were, were to be exalted. And, and the idea was those who have these great spiritual gifts, they're the most important. And those who have no spiritual gift or, or have a, a, least, or a less significant spiritual gift, they're not as important. There was this, this, this dichotomy of really important people and people who really didn't matter. The church was split. There were schisms. There were divisions. There was strife. There was all sorts of issues. And that's why when you get to chapter 13 tonight, Paul says, all those spiritual gifts, really, they're not anything without love, without charity. He deals with that idea in the, the context of the body. And here in chapter 12, again, through really chapter 14, he's dealing with spiritual gifts. And he, he's making the point of, of where the spiritual gifts come from, of what the spiritual gifts are, to an extent of why the spiritual gifts are given. Uh, in, in our text here this morning, he's making this point that these spiritual gifts, they shouldn't, they shouldn't cause division. They should cause unity. And in unity, every member is important. If you're going to be unified, if you're going to have the unity that's meant to be, every part of the body has a part to play. It's important, every part. And so it begins to, to deal with this problem, this issue that they had in this church by dealing with what we call the body, the body. You say, what is this body of Christ? He talks about it there in verse 12, verse 14. Throughout the whole text, he's talking about this body of Christ made up of many members. And what's the body? Well, if you don't want to be here till two o'clock, you're just going to have to, to trust some of the things I'm going to throw at you very quickly. This is a much bigger study, but, but we don't have the time for dealing with all of these this morning. Just essentially, it's this. The body of Christ is the church. All right, a lot of passages, Ephesians 1, Ephesians 5, Colossians 1.18. We read one of those in men's prayer this morning. Here in chapter 12, verse 27 and 28, look at it. He says, now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular, and God has set some in the church. He, he uses those words interchangeably. A lot of other places in the Bible that very clearly spell out, the body is the church, the church is the body. All right, so everybody clear on that point? What's the body of Christ? The church. Question number two. What is the church? 
you want to be here till two o'clock? <laughs> this is a much, as I said, a very large and broad and big topic. The church, let's just put it this way. There is no such thing as a universal body or a universal church. Capital C, church. That is not a biblical concept. It's a, it's a man-made concept. It is a concept that many people buy into, but just because many people believe something doesn't make it true. The Bible does not teach that there is a universal church, often called a Catholic, or a, it's what the word Catholic means, a universal church. That's, there's no such thing. A church, every time that you see it in the Bible, what's it mean? What's the word church or ecclesia mean? It means a called out assembly. If it's going to be a church, it has to assemble. All right, it has to be able to, to come together. Even those who would espouse universal church doctrine would have to admit it and do admit. The word ecclesia means an assembly, a group of people, a gathering. And you can't gather something that's universal. There's Again, a lot of verses that we could give, dozens, in fact. If you want the list, I'd be happy to share that with you, of verses that, that help us see. Church means assembly, called out group of people. So you say, when we say the body is the church, what we're saying is all believers everywhere. No, 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 no. We're talking about a local, visible, called out assembly. So you say, well, what's that mean? So Midlands Bible Baptist Church, we are the body of Christ. We assemble at 2407 Chandler Road East in Bellevue, Nebraska. We are Christ's body at this place, this group of people, this assembly. We are the body of Christ. There is no such thing as this universal thing. Again, there's a lot we could say about that that just simply aren't going to make the time for this morning. Within that body, within that assembly, within that church, there are many members. Verse number 12 helps us see that. The body is one and they have many, many members, many parts in that body. You and I, we are members of the body. If you're a member of this church, you, have, you, you are a part of the body. Just like physical bodies are really just an assembly of different parts, so is a church. Assembly of various parts stitched together. Don't have to get weird with the illustration. Say, try to figure out who's what part. That could be fun. Start assigning body parts. That would be a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> have a lot of fun with that. That's, not, that's taking the illustration way too far. In fact, the only body part that is assigned is the head. You say, who's the head of the, who's the, head of the body? Jesus Christ. Every other part's just a member. Many parts, one body, one assembly, made up of a local visible church. By the way, these members that are within this assembly made up of many different types. A lot of different types. Again, the, the passage deals with some of them, Jew or Gentile, he speaks of, bond or free. There's a lot of different types of members. I'm thankful to tell you this morning, not all of us are the same. We, we, we are not all of us the same. There's different backgrounds. There's different, there's different uh, cultures. There's different, uh, there's different social economic standing. There's different education levels. There's, different, there's a lot of differences here. And it's meant to be that way, that there would be differences, different tastes, different preferences, different personalities, different responsibilities, different temperaments, different spiritual gifts. The idea is this. It's supposed to be diverse, yet all of it unified in the one body. Again, he makes some of the pictures, some of the ways he talks about it. Imagine if it was all this one member. Imagine if the whole thing was an eye, whole thing was an ear. Well, it really wouldn't function very well. Be great at seeing, but it wouldn't be able to do anything else. Points he's making. Within all that diversity, he does speak of, again, the importance of unity. In verse 24, 25, there shouldn't be a schism. There shouldn't be a division within that body. You say, what happens when a body divides itself and turns on itself? Well, they call that cancer. The body begins to fight and eat itself and attack itself, and, and it's a, it's, it, it causes great havoc on a body. It's something that has to be removed, that has to be cleansed, that has to be fixed. That happens in churches, by the way. You say, how, do, how is it that a church assembly can, can, can have a, a church split? 
Church turns inward on itself and begins to attack and fight and strife and, and divides. And you've got groups of different people going different directions. And a church is, is unhealthy when it's like that. Church, we need to have unity here. Amen. Yes, we're all very different, but we need to be unified on some very important matters. Verse 13 helps us see this, that within this body, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, he plays a part in putting each one of us in the body. Look at verse 13. He says, for by one Spirit, are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. The point is this. There's unity because the Spirit's the one in control. Other places in the passage, he deals with the idea of the, the Spirit setting them in the body. The idea there is assigning different members, different roles within the body. That's the Spirit's job. He does that. He's in charge. He's the one in control. He's equipping. He's leading. Again, we look to, to our Savior as the head of the body. He's in control. He's in charge. So the body of Christ, which is a church, which is an assembly, is made up of many members, us. Okay, got that? Here's the point I want to make in verse 15, 16. Each member needs the rest of the body. Each member, each individual part needs the whole. Say, is it possible for the foot to get an attitude against the hand? That's what he says in verse 15. Look at it. He says, the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Poor foot. <laughs> foot gets shoved in a sock and then shoved in a shoe and gets walked on all day. Think about the hand. Visible, very um, external. You see it. Handshake, high five. Gets to wear rings, gets to wear watches. Two hands together, by the way, make up a quarter of all the bones in the body within our hands, very intricate. Each hand, thousands of nerve endings per square inch. Takes up, takes up a, a huge part of the motor cortex of our brain, designated for the hand, just the movements of our hands. So intricate. Very, very rarely do the hands stay still, always moving, always doing something. They can compensate, the hands can, for loss of vision by learning to read Braille. You can compensate for loss of voice or hearing by sign language. The hands are super useful, very visible. You compare that to the foot. Again, the foot, poor foot. I'm not the hand. Look at what the hand does. Look at what the hand has to, get to do. Look at all the people who see the hand and, and the way the hand is used. I'm a foot. I'm mad about being a hand, he says in verse 15. Well, he says God has designed the foot to do exactly what the foot does. The foot's important, and the hand is important. They each have a vital role. They're each important, and imagine trying to function without each other. Hands by itself, feet by themselves. You don't have a body any longer. Not just the foot that can get an attitude. Look at verse 16. The ear can get an attitude about the eye. I'm not the eye. Shall it? What's it say? I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Think about the eye. 30% of the brain used to function and process what the eye sees. 3% designated for the use of the ear. Think about the eye. Again, all that we see, and probably for many of us would say the most important of our senses, the ability to see, the eye of the soul, all the things that we talk about and the beauty, beauty of the eye. Nobody looks at somebody and says, you've got beautiful ears. <laughs> Be a weird poem to your wife. I love your ears. I mean, I, I do love my wife's ears, but her eyes are normally what stand out, what we, we, we see and think of first. So these ears get this attitude and say, I'm not of the body anymore. I'm not important like the eye. The idea here is this. Can our, can our physical body function if every part has this mindset? I'm not important. I don't matter. I'm not like that other body part, so I'm not going to be part of the body. What happens to the body when that happens? Well, it doesn't function. You're not supposed to lose body parts. 
hands and feet and ears and eyes are all important. When you start losing body parts, it's an emergency. It's an emergency. It calls for drastic uh, intervention when body parts start to, 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 to be ill and to, and, to, and to have to be amputated. That's a, that's a major thing. It doesn't happen easily and it doesn't happen lightly. The point he's making is this. Body parts don't survive on their own. When a hand gets removed from the body, a foot, an eye, an ear, you remove it from the body, it doesn't survive. It dies. Members of the body cannot opt out of the body and think, well, I'll be okay on my own. I'm not like that person. I'm like this person. I'm not like that part of the body. I'm, I'm different. I'm not as important, so I'm going to leave and think it's okay. Not going to happen. Not going to work. Do these verses help us see? Each member needs the body. Hands by themselves aren't really useful. Feet, ears, eyes, all by themselves aren't useful. Verse 21, he's essentially saying the same thing there. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head of, to the feet, I have no need of you. Again, you can't look at other parts of the body and say, that part's not important. It doesn't need the body. No, it's not the case. You say, why is it that some members of the body might have a mindset like this? Why would the ear say, I don't need the body. I'm not important. I'm not, I'm not valued. You say, why is it that the foot might have this attitude? I'm not part of the body not appreciated, not used, not recognized, not as gifted as the hand or the eye. Listen, there's a lot of reasons. Think about some of these. A lot of reasons people can have. We're making an application of what uh, the picture is Paul's drawing for us. A lot of reasons people can have to say, you know what, I'm not of the body anymore. I'm the hand, I'm the foot, I'm the ear, I'm the eye. I'm not part of the body anymore. I'm not valued I'm not recognized. That member has more recognition. That member has more responsibility. That member is valued more. That member has more appreciation than I do, so I'm not going to be part of the body. Does that happen? Mm. Fortunately, it does. It does. Don't feel. Members cannot, can, can feel as if they're not important feel like they're just a feeble part of the body and it's not important. They don't belong. Say, what part of the body doesn't belong? No, every part belongs. Thinking about this context of a body. Listen, every member has a place. Let every member belong. Let's not, let's not be a body that's made up of cliques where it seems like everybody's got their own spot where they belong and there's some people who don't have any place to be. Every member needs to have a place and needs to belong. Be careful that we have, have that attitude or that mindset. Say, why else does a member think it's not important? Why else would a member leave the body? Well, other members, they withdraw because they're hurt by another part of the body. Does that happen? I'm afraid that happens probably more often than any other reason. Body, intentionally or unintentionally, something happens between two different parts of the body and the solution for one member is to say, well, I'm leaving the body. You don't amputate your hand, your foot, try to heal it. Other members withdrawn from the body because they spiritually sick with false doctrine, sin, caught up in something that causes them to leave the body. Others never really become part of the body. Yes, maybe formally are recognized as part of the body, part of the church, but, but that member never really gets plugged in, never gets involved, never, never belongs, never fits, never does what's necessary to really be incorporated in the life of the church. That is, by the way, something common in, in our, our particular community. We're in a military community. People come in for expected three or four years. And so there, there is maybe some reluctance to say, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to attach myself or, or get involved. I'm just going to kind of be on the peripheral and, and I'll just be here for the three years that I'm going to be here. And then we're going to move on and never get connected to the body. That's not in any way the mindset a, a member ought to have. Why else do members not stay with the body? Why do they withdraw themselves? Well, some because they don't have friends. They feel like they have a friend, don't have social connection. You say, is that a good reason to, 
to cut yourself off from the body? No, it's not. Not at all. Are you trying to make friends? Proverbs 18, 24. A man that hath friends must what? Show himself friendly. It's weird when somebody says, I have no friends. And you say, well, are you, what are you doing to try to make friends? Well, I don't know. I was waiting for somebody to make a friend with me. Oh, don't, that's not the mindset. So why else do members withdraw? Some, some might withdraw because of busyness. Too busy. Got sports. I got school. I got family. I got work. Listen, if you're, if you're too busy for church, you're too busy. Ask yourself. This is a good question to ask yourself. Is it God that's leading me to be less involved in church? Is God the one directing this, telling me to be less involved? I doubt it would be God's direction. Say, why, why else? Well, there's a lot of reasons, a lot of other reasons we could look at. As to be, you say, what would be the, the reason a, a body member, a part of the body would withdraw itself or disconnect itself? You say, is it, is it valid? Is it a good reason? Are any of these reasons good? No, because, listen, if you're a member, if you're a hand, if you're a foot, if you're an ear, if you're an eye, you need the body. You don't function on your own. Things won't work disconnected from the body. So, you need the body. Okay? Does that make sense? Hands, feet, eyes, ears, they don't function except for being part of the whole. You need the body, but the body needs you. You are a member of the body. You are not expendable. The body needs you. Again, he he speaks in verse 17 of the different parts of the body, the different members, again, the diversity within the body, many different parts that are, that are part of it. Again, unity in doctrine, unity in purpose, unity in practice and philosophy. Yes, there should be unity in those things, but when it comes down to the different members within the body, yes, there's going to be diversity. Makes this clear that in verse 17, all of the, the parts have their own unique function. Look at verse 17. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Imagine a body that's just made up of, of eye or ear. Again, it wouldn't be a very functional body, would it? You need different parts. Every part's got its own responsibility. Every part's got its role. Every part contributes to the well-being of the body. Each part has a function contributing. The point I want to make here is this. If you're not fulfilling your role, if you're the hand or the foot or the ear or the eye, and you're not doing your part, nobody else can. You've got a part. You've got a place. You're a member of the body. You've got a responsibility. You've got a part in the whole, and you can't just say, well, the eye will take care of the hearing. The foot will take care of the, of the, of the handling. You have a part in the, in the function of the body. You can't say, well, yeah, I, my, my role, my responsibility just isn't that important. I'm not comely. I'm not honorable. I'm not out there like the hand or, or I'm not visible like the eye. You can't say that. Every part has an important place. Look at verse 18. The Bible says, Now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. You say, what's that word set there? It means this. It means to place purposefully. God hath purposefully placed each member in the body. What's that mean? It means God's got you right where he wants you. He's got a purpose for where you are. For what you're doing. God has a will and he's put you in here for a reason. Because God's the head, because he's the one setting members in order, you say, what what does that mean? Well, 
means this. The responsibilities that God has given you, see it in this light. That's God giving you responsibility. Him setting you in that place. Understand, we have ministries. We have different ways in which people volunteer, people get involved. I'm trusting that as that happens, there is a there is a sense of, of direction from God, that we're not just willy-nilly throwing people around and that you go do that, you go do this, you do this. No, there should be a sense of, of letting God place people in the, in the body where he wants them. And when God does that, recognize this is from God, the roles that he's given you. Let God determine where you are. When God does, be content where you are. Be content where you are. Say, I, I don't like the role I've got. I feel like that role should be mine or that role. No, listen, if God put you there, God set you there, you serve right where you're supposed to be. Verse 19, essentially saying the very same thing. Verse 17 saying, again, if, if every part of the body was the same thing, it wouldn't work. Every part's got its place and every part is necessary. Look at verse 21. The eye and the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Now, you're not allowed to say, you're not essential. You're not important. You don't matter. No member of the body is allowed to say that. Look at verse 21. Again, making this clear. It's interesting. Again, the illustration Paul uses, uh, the the uh, analogy is members of the body talking. You say the hands talk, eyes and ears talk. No, they don't talk. But in Paul's illustration, they do. Again, this eye saying to the hand, get out of here. You're not important. You're not necessary. The head to the feet. I've got no need of you. Look at verse 22. Much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble. What's Paul say about those? Are necessary. Even the ones you might look at and say, that's insignificant. That's not important. That particular member of the body, that particular body part just doesn't really do much. It's not really important to the whole. Well, no, not according to God's word. Look at verse 23, 24. I know we have to hurry through these verses because there is a good bit we're trying to cover this morning. It talks about this honor that's placed on those that are, that are uncomely, those members of the body which we think to be less honorable. Upon these, we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. There's parts of the body that we clothe, that we give extra honor to, for our comely parts have no need. But God hath tempered the body. Again, the idea of God has set the body exactly like he wants it. He's tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked and he's given clothing to the part that's not as honorable as others. He's fitted. The, again, the idea of, of, of tempering is combining. I, I, I think of, of my children who they, they often get Legos for their birthday or Legos for Christmas. And what they do is they take all these little different pieces. They follow instructions and they put them all together. They temper the pieces, set the pieces in order. What happens? You come up with some fish or or building or car or something. They build something that has a semblance of usefulness, right? That's what he's saying here. God has tempered every one of these individual members, put them all together, created something useful, something whole. Look at verse 25. This is challenging for us. Again, he's, he's tempered the body together, verse 24, that there should be no schism in the body that there should be the idea there is no rip, or no tear, no division. None of us, you say, our physical bodies here, none of us like to be torn. Doing some work in the yard the other day and cut myself. You know what happens when, that hap when, when, uh, when you cut yourself? The whole body hurts. <laughs> the whole body, like a little cut on your finger and, and it's pain in your hand, in your arm, and it says, ow, your whole body reacts to it. There's a cut, there's a division, there's a schism, there's a break. Listen, he's saying that, that ought not to be the case in a church, in a body. It needs to be unity. Don't, listen, don't, don't think that divisions when it comes to doctrine, when it comes to philosophy, when it comes to ministry, that divisions aren't that big of a thing. 
We're going to see tonight, 1 Corinthians 13, the love we're supposed to have for one another. Don't think, well, there can be animosity, or there can be bitterness, or there can be an unforgiving spirit, or there can be, there can be uh, a gossip, or, or other ways in which we might sin against each other and think, oh, the body will be okay. And you're cutting the body, dividing the body, slicing the body up. It's going to destroy the body. Verse 25, again, no, no schism in the body, but he says that the members should have the same care one for another. What's that mean? The word care there speaks of giving careful attention to, giving consideration for. You say, is that, is that something that should happen within a church home, within a church body? Yes. Every member, you look around and say, every part of the body giving attention to other parts, concerned for other parts, caring for other parts. Look at verse 26. That care that we ought to have for every member in the body ought to happen in any situation. Whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. That care that we're talking about extends through suffering. When one member of the body is suffering, is hurt, is going through a trial, should we just say, well, that's, that's the finger. Hope that finger gets okay. No, the whole body should hurt. The whole body should suffer along with it. Try to bear that burden together. The rest of the verse says, and when one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. When one, when mon, one member has, has something to be joyful over, well, rejoice. The whole, the whole body should rejoice. Again, there's this idea of unity, of, of togetherness that should be taking place here. So he, he's making the point throughout this passage. You can't be spiritually healthy if you are a divided body. You've got a hand over here and a foot over here and an eye and an ear over here thinking they can go their own direction and the body will be okay. That's not a body that's going to function properly. The body itself can't function correctly if not every member contributing in its own unique way. In other words, as I've shared with you before, you need the body, you're a member of the body, and body parts don't function apart on their own. You need the body. You've got something to give the body. The body needs you. So think about it for just a moment. How would this apply? If it's true that you need the body and the body needs you, if it's true that every member needs the church and the church needs every member, what should that mean? Well, a couple of things I want to throw at you and we'll be done. It means this, for one, that an independent spirit, an independent spirit on the part of any members is going to bring harm to the whole. When any member has it in their mind, I don't need the rest of the body. The eye saying, I don't need the hand. The hand saying, I don't need the foot. When any member has an independent spirit, you're harming the whole. For any member to say, I'm not as important. I'm not needed. You're harming the whole. One commentator, his name is John Stott, he said this. He's a man we would disagree with on, on plenty of different issues, but this particular one, he's, he gets it very right, I like the way he puts it. He says, an independent spirit brings atrophy and paralysis to the body as a whole because it is deprived of certain contributions without which it's going to degenerate that the body is going to degenerate, it's going to decay, it's going to die without the contributions of that part that's placed there by God to have, a, to have a role in the body. An independent spirit is going to bring atrophy, it's going to bring paralysis, it's going to shut the body down. When the body begins to think, I, all these different members think, I don't need the rest of it, I don't need the rest of it, I'm not important, I don't need it, I'm not important, I'm not going to be part of the body, I'm not going to fulfill my role. You are not expendable. You are not dispensable. Don't think that, well, if I'm not involved or if I'm not committed or if I'm not present or if I'm not serving 
or if I'm not involved in ministry, the body will be okay. What would happen if every member of the body said that? Consider next time that you're saying, yeah, is it important that I serve? Is it important that I be involved? Is it important that I be in church? Remember this, it's not just for you. Others need you to be present, to be here. You have a part in the health, the spiritual health of others. You do. It's not good for any member, any part to be separated from the body. If it's true that you need the body, then here's a couple things we need to think about. You need to be part of a body. If Paul's point is true, he's saying every member needs the body. Every member needs to be a part of the body. You need to be a part of a body. Again, we're losing translation here. You need to be part of a church. If you're not a member of this church, be happy to talk to you about that. And you say, I, I can't or I won't join Midlands Bible Baptist Church. Well, then you need to join somewhere else. You need to be part of a body. There, there's in the New Testament no, no picture, no envisioning of, of Christianity separated from, a, from life in a church. It, it's, it's always in the context of a New Testament local called out assembly. Everything you read about it, it's, it's all done in that context. You say, I'm not going to be part of a body. I don't want to be attached to any one body. Well, you're going to have a hard time defending that scripturally. You need to be part of a body. It's God's design for every member to be joined, to be attached. You say, I just, there's a reason why that can't be, or there's a reason that hasn't be. Well, let's, let's talk about that. I'd be happy to talk with you about membership. If it's true that you need the body, then you need to be part of a body. If it's true that you need the body, then when the body gathers, join it. Gather with it. Make, make that threshold very high that threshold of, of when to skip church or when to miss church. Again, I understand there are things in life that cause us to not be able to be in church. I won't be here next Sunday. All right? There, there's, there's, there's legitimate reasons in life to say, I can't make it. You're sick. We love you. Watch online. You're going to make everybody else sick. We don't want that. All right? But, but make sure. Is it legitimate? We're very, again, our, our flesh tends to pull us this way and say, well, it's, it's, uh, eh, it's easier to watch online. It's easier to watch online. That, should, that, that can't be our mindset. Listen, make the, the gathering of the body a priority. Don't let, and this is, again, the tendency, don't let something pull you from assembling. Again, ask yourself, is this God leading me? to not be involved in this service? Is it God that's saying, don't be in, in church today? Or is it me saying or coming up with reasons or, or excuses? Make sure God's actually leading. I, I appreciate Carl Boonstra. He was a couple years ago with us for our missions conference and he's the fellow we're praying for. Can't, pancreatic cancer, 96, right up in that. I've been talking. He had a streak in his life, 63 years without missing church that insane? I don't know if that was every Sunday morning, evening, and Wednesday, or if it was just every Sunday he was in church. I, I can't imagine it was every Sunday, Sunday, Wednesday, but 63 years of, of being in church every single week. And I'm not saying that it's, it's never going to happen where you're able to just say, I, I can't be there, but make sure that threshold's high and keep it high. What is able to keep you from being in church? Don't be one of the members that says, I'm not important. I'm not the hand, I'm not the eye, and so I'm not necessary, I'm not significant, I'm not needed. No, you need the body, and we need you. The body needs you. Prioritize the gathering, prioritize the assembly. Don't isolate yourself. Don't think, well, if I, if I fall away from the body, I'll be okay. What happens when you sever a member from the body and leave it for a time? starts to grow rotten flesh decays there's no life there before long it's it's useless 
don't think I can, I can disconnect myself from God's institution, from God's body here and say, I'll be all right. I'll still thrive spiritually. No, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You need the body. If it's true that you need the body and if it's true that the body needs you, understand this. Because the body needs you, you have a role, a part to play in the health of Midlands Bible Baptist Church. You directly contribute to this church moving forward, this church falling away. You have a part to play. Every single one of us does. So don't think, well, I'm, again, not part of those important parts. So Paul's trying to dispel that idea that, that there are important parts and non-important parts. No, listen, every part's important. If you're not fulfilling your role, the body is suffering for it. The body needs you. You've heard the song before, what kind of church would my church be if every member was just like me? The chorus of that song, I wonder what kind of church would my church be if every member was just like me? How many souls would be saved today if it all depended on what I say? I wonder how many prayers would my Lord have to answer if all that he heard came from me? I wonder what kind of church would my church be if every member was just like me? Think about that for a second. If every member witnessed like you witness, would this church be properly called a lighthouse? A place where the gospel is being spread abroad, the gospel is being sent out? If every member witnessed exactly like you do. What if every member... Every member attended just like you. Would, would there be anybody in Sunday school? Would there be anybody in the services? If every member served in ministry just like you do, what would happen? If every, listen, if every member's giving was just like yours, would the financial condition of the church be solid, be firm? If every member's marriage was like yours, Every member's love for their child was like yours. Every, every member's Bible study time was like yours. Every member's prayer life was like yours. What kind of spiritual health would Midlands Bible Baptist Church have if every member was just like you? It's good for us to think about. Good for us to think about. Every member has a vital role. You have a vital role. You do. You need the body, and the body needs you. If God's placed you in this body, if he set you here, if he has tempered the body and you're part of it and you've, you've been placed, you're one of the Lego pieces in the whole, then listen, you need to see that role as important. Don't neglect that role. Don't think, I can, I, I can, I can be negligent, I can miss, I can, I, can, I can do what I need to do on my own and be okay. No, the whole body's suffering when every member's not plugged in. Every member has a part. Listen, from the oldest member here to the youngest member here, every adult, every teenager, from those who've been here for, for generations, for decades, you've been a part of Midlands Bible Baptist Church. For those who've been here for weeks, months, you've hardly been here very long at all. From spiritually mature believers to those who say, I I've just gotten saved within the last six months. Regardless of where you are on that spectrum, you have a pole, a role. You have a part in the health of this body. You're important. And our tendency, to th our tendency is to think, well, they'll be okay if I'm not there. They'll be okay if I'm not involved. They'll be okay if I'm not part. They'll be okay if I don't minister. Listen, Satan would love for every single one of the body members to think that way. If we all thought that way, Midlands Bible Baptist Church would be nothing, be destroyed. Say, I'm just one member. It doesn't matter. I'm just one member. Well, for want of a nail, the kingdom was lost. You are important. So please, when we think about this idea of you need the body, the body needs you. Each member needs other members. Each member needs what the body as a whole offers. And each member has something to contribute to the whole. What we're saying this morning is this. You're important. You are important. Individually, you are important. 
You know what else is important? The church is important. The body is important. Both are equally important. Both have a, a vital role in your spiritual health. So please don't neglect your role. and Don't neglect the body and its role. So we bow our heads this morning. I'm, I'm going to encourage you. I know this is a, a, a passage of scripture that deals with, with life in the church. And it's going to come up again tonight from 1 Corinthians 13, our behavior within church. It's time for us to think, though, not the eye thinking for the ear, the hand thinking for the foot. No, it's time for each of us as members individually to ask our Lord and say, am I as an individual member of this body, the one that you've placed here, the one that you've tempered to be this part, am I fulfilling my God-given role? Am I where you want me to be? Am I fulfilling what you've called me to fulfill? Father, this morning as we've looked into 1 Corinthians 12, this analogy, this illustration of, of parts of a church, Father, I pray it for every one of us is clear that we all of us have a role we all of us have a responsibility. Every one of us is important in our own individual way. And at the same time, the whole is important. The body as a whole is, is vital. Help each of us to, for a few moments here during the invitation, consider and pray. Ask you, how is it that you're, <clears throat> how is it that you're leading for some, maybe it is church membership, needing to finally take that step of joining the body, of seeking the Lord regarding membership here or somewhere else, Father. That's certainly your intention for them to be somewhere. For some, maybe it is a matter of being a member but not being present, not involved, not serving, not having a role within the body. And we know this, you've placed them here for a reason. There is a purpose to them being here. Help them to see what that would be. Or for others, perhaps some that are, that are very involved, are serving in a multiple different number of ways. Lord, strengthen that member. Encourage that member. Help them to see that their responsibilities are vital to the health of the entire body. Father, keep every one of us from thinking we're unimportant. Our presence is, is insignificant. Keep us from thinking that we have little to offer. You'll help each of us to see we are vital to the health of the whole body. Lord, work on us. Whatever the direction would be, whatever specific aspect of the message you would take and apply to our hearts, Lord, you know where each of us are, you know the response that each of us should have. I pray that you would help us to be surrendered and submitted to your will here. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'd stand with me this morning and take your hymnals and, to, and turn to hymn number 483. I Surrender All is our hymn this morning. I encourage you, wherever it is that you are in your spiritual life, in your spiritual walk with our Lord, there's a lot of ways in which a message like this could apply. I encourage you, ask him, how do I apply this now, Father? All to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence. Day
towards you. I have a word of prayer with you. I do feel like we need to pray one more time, and then I'll have Brother Mick come, and he'll, he'll dismiss us. Father, once again, I want to thank you for this particular passage of Scripture. It would help every one of us to take what we've heard this morning, the information, the, the Scripture, the, the points that have been made from this particular passage, and to make application, to be very careful, to thoroughly think through the implications of of what we've just been exposed to. Father, I want to pray just for a moment for the health of Midlands Bible Baptist Church. Lord, I pray that you'd help us collectively to be a healthy church, a church that has every member in its place, every member doing its part. Lord, I pray that there would be no hindrances, there would be no cancers, There would be no schisms. There would be nothing that would stand in the way of this church accomplishing what you do intend for it to accomplish. Lord, the health of this church is going to rise and fall based on the health of its members. Lord, so I pray this morning for each one who makes up this church. Lord, help them to see their vital role in the health and the role in the in the uh, in the whole father see their part see their place help each individual member to give thought to um, their particular responsibilities father help each of us to consider what would this church be if everybody was just like me lord we we have much to think about and lord i pray it wouldn't just be things we think about but things that would would have an effect have an impact on us. Lord, bless the service tonight as we, uh, according to your will, would spend some time in 1 Corinthians 13 and speak to the, the role of charity within the body. Father, I pray that you would challenge us from those verses. Lord, give us safety as we go home. Bless us as we return. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a few announcements for us before we dismiss. Uh, this Tuesday evening, uh, we are actually going to have a work night uh, here at the church. 5.30, we'll have uh, pizza provided for that. And then 6 o'clock, we'll begin our work. That'll be this Tuesday. Uh, and then uh, on uh, Wednesday after the service, there'll be a ladies' retreat meeting uh, right after the service. And so if you're not able to attend that, uh, but you are going to ladies' retreat, you can see Abby Huntley for more details. Uh, Friday, we have a youth group activity at 6 o'clock. And then Friday through Saturday will be our ladies' retreat. Uh, this week. Let's go ahead and close our service uh, with our closing chorus, Heaven Came Down. Heaven Came Down